please not confuse obedience to God and the works. Okay? Works and obedience are two different words. And Jesus used obedience. Those who obey Him have eternal salvation. Those who do not obey His commands are not His at all. Those are obedience. Works are two totally different things. But you used Ephesians 2, 8 through 9. For by grace, okay, what does by grace mean? The way that provided you the opportunity for by grace that you did not deserve, you have a gift of having an opportunity, for by grace you have been saved through what? Through faith. Faith. What is faith? It's putting God's word into action with full authority in your life. That is an action. God provided the way, gave you his word and instruction, just like the people with Moses. They had to step out into the water for the water to part. That's stepping out and putting God's word into action. If they did not step into the water, the water would not have parted. So they obeyed God's word, put it in action. That's faith. And the results happen. That's faith. All right. For by grace, you have been saved through faith. Not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. All right. Keep reading. Not of works, lest anyone should boast. He didn't say not of obedience. He said not of works. Keep reading. Number 10. For we are his workmanship created in Christ for good works which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Being obedient to God and walking in the good works that He prepared beforehand is what God's saying to do. Works and obedience, two different things. But God provided grace now. See, at the mouth of two or three witnesses previously, you would be put, to your last breath on earth at the mouth of two or three witnesses. That ended. That's grace. Now you don't have to be governed by the government anymore. Each man stands before God himself. You don't have to go to a priest anymore either. Matter of fact, it's it's absolutely disobedient to do so. The veil tore from top to bottom. You have a direct connection to God now. That's grace. That's a gift. That's an opportunity should you choose to walk forward in that. And you're created for good works that God prepared beforehand for your life. When he tells you that it's those who keeps his commandments, it is he who loves me. And he who loves me and was loved by my father and I will love him and manifest myself to him. If anyone loves me, will keep my word and my father will love him and we will come to him and make our home with him. Can't get any more plain than that. And this here, you cannot overlook this. And having been perfected, he became the author of eternal salvation. Jesus is the word. He's the author of the word. He's the author of eternal salvation to all who do what? Divine, you cannot confuse obedience and works to all who obey him. This also was written after Jesus Christ died. And he's telling you, you have to obey him. If you continue to live in sin, that's called, hey, repent, turn away from. See, Jesus is the one that told us also, unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. All means all. God's word never changes. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. You just read that. These are not works. This is verification of who your Lord is. Let's not make that confusion again. We've got it clear. You can read these passages yourself. It's I encourage you to do so. There are so many churches that are twisting the word of grace. And if you look here in the Bible, God gave you the instructions of what was necessary to do. But walking in sin separates you from God. It 100% is wages of sin is death. That never changed. Obeying him had never changed. If you remove one word from this book of the prophecy in Revelation 22, read it. That's why it's there. 
He will remove your name from the Lamb's book of life. If you add anything to it, he will add the plagues that are written within this book to you. Now, it's very common that churches have removed the words from this book from their pulpit. They're in danger. They're not preaching truth because they want membership. They want popularity. Agreeing with them is their main purpose instead of the word of God. So whoever abides in him, capital H, Jesus Christ, Lord and Savior, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, does not sin. Whoever sins has neither seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous, just as he is righteous. He who sins is of the devil, for the devil has been sinning from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested, made known, that he may destroy the works of the devil. Whoever has been born of God does not sin, for his seed remains in him. And he cannot sin because he's born of God. He's talking about the person who got saved. That little age there. Whoever's been born of God does not sin. For his, capital H, God's seed remains in him, little age person who chose God. And he cannot sin because he has been born of God. In this, the children of God and the children of the devil are manifest, made known. That's who is known. Whoever does not does not practice righteousness is not of God. That's how you know who the children of Satan are, nor is he who does not love his brother. So how do you know who are the children of God? By what they do. They're obeying to God's word. They're walking in it. They're staying in it. We're preaching truth here, whether people want to hear it or not. You're made for good works that you should walk in your good works. It is not that that saved you. It is your decision to step out in faith, step into the water, and let the water part. Let's plead.